Hello and welcome back to the inner. Today I have with me my older sister, my friend, my family, uh, Prophet Sean Stanley. Thank you. Hi, Sean. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for having me. Awesome. How are you? I'm good. The workday is over. Awesome. So if you would introduce yourself, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, my name is Prophet Sean Stanley. Um, to tell you a little about myself, I guess we could probably start about, I was raised as a Seventh-day Adventist um, for many of years. When, of course, you know, as you get older, you go on to do your own thing. Um, the greatest thing is the fact that my mother raised me as a Seventh-day Adventist because the word was instilled in me. So even though, you know, I became an adult and started doing things on my own, the word was here. And so, and the calling was always there on my life. I can recall from even being as a, as, as a teenager or even like in my uh, 12 years old and I would have dreams or I would say to my family members, oh, I remember this and I remember, and then they would say, oh, you're too young to remember that. And you know how the old folks used to say, oh, that's just deja vu, but it wasn't, <laughs> it was Holy Spirit telling me some secrets. That's awesome. So I actually can relate to that a little bit. I remember a lot more than people think I should. <laughs> um, like, I still remember the day I was born just a little bit. <laughs> and most people's memory don't go back that far. No. Mostly because they don't exercise it. Like, uh, they don't, a lot of people don't like to think back that far, to be honest. Uh, right. Scientifically, we only use on like 10% of our brains. The other yeah. 90%, I would say, are pioneers such as Enoch and uh, they were they were using the full capacity. And mm -hmm. that's something that kingdom relationship, what you should, what God, what Yahweh wants us to have. Yeah. So how did your relationship with God really develop? What was your uh, I actually know you type of experience? When did that start to settle in? I was, um, I was going to a Pentecostal church. Um, and every time, you know, we, we, I would go, I would have, like the service could go on and my own personal worship was going on and I could see, I said, I would have open eye visions. And when I would go to the elders, as they say, and I would say, well, God was showing me this and God is showing me that. Um, and they would say, you know, well, well, you know, I was new to the church. Um, let's just say, you know, go read scripture, go find scripture was always been direct. Go read the Bible. Either if it's in the Bible, then it's, it's, it's the truth. Right. But the things that God was showing me was not in the Bible. I could, you know, for me, the actual, my actual personal experience it's just like the scripture that always talks about to see the kingdom i truly understand that on a personal level because i had um i was home one night i was in the bed and i went to bed crying i went to bed crying because of a doctor's report that i had received and in the in the i was lying in the bed and then i could smell you know what Christmas morning smells like in your house? Your, your parents is cooking cakes and pies. It's been a while. <laughs> you know, back at, you know, when we participated um, and the house smells like cakes and all kinds of yummy stuff. All kinds of yummy stuff. And so I woke up to, to smelling that and, and I'm looking all around my room, but my room had this glow. There was no lights on, um, my curtains were, were closed. And I heard this voice said, the voice began to speak to me and tell me not to cry. And to tell me of all the things that he's called me for. And then he started telling me things about myself. I have a, a, an, a, a vein that's on my right arm that's shaped just like a heart. And every time I would go to the doctor's office, they were often amazed about, you know, especially when they get 
get ready to take blood. And they would see this and they would call all these other people around, right? So Holy Spirit said to me, do you know why I gave you that extra heart? And I'm talking and I'm like, no, it's just because of the capacity to love that you're going to have to go through. It's going to be painful, but you, you have, I've given you a heart dub two hearts for the capacity of love that you need to have for my people. I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. So I was laying in bed and then Holy Spirit began to say, I will give you many children, many children. And then uh, Holy Spirit said, now get off the bed and give me the praise for what God is going to do for you. And I continue to lay there because I'm trying to decide like, who is this talking to me? <laughs> You know, the the voice was so loud, Nelson, that my ears rang out in severe pain. I jumped out of the bed, got on my knees, and just began to thank God, just thank him over. Just My whole pre uh, worship service was right there. So the next morning, I got up and I called my mother. I was like, Mom, I got to tell you something. You know, I'm probably should back then. She probably saying, she probably thought I was loony, you know. But as uh, that was my personal, and when I say to see the kingdom, I call it your Damascus Road experience. You know, when what was it Apostle uh, Paul, who was a, the great uh, person that crucified a lot of the followers of the way. But while he was on the Damascus Road, he had that experience. He heard, you know, the voice of God. He saw. And he actually blinded him so he could see. So that has, that was my my experience. And I, from having that experience alone, going to church every Sunday was not fulfilling to me. It was not, you go and then by the time you get to the parking lot, you know, or when I would be sitting there and Holy Spirit would be saying, I remember, and this sounds, may sound funny, but I remember uh, a pastor was saying, or the bishop was saying, I could feel the Holy Spirit in here. Holy Spirit is here. And I turned around and Holy Spirit said, if I actually came here, the majority of people would run because they've never had an actual experience with me. They would give the enemy credit saying it's demonic because they've never experienced healing. They've never seen it, you know? And so that, that parlays me into my sphere of dominion. I know my sphere of dominion is healing of the hearts. I also know my experience is healing physically to the body. If you could share your encounter that you had where you were up in heaven with the fire and the healing, I was I was sitting in my um in the living room and I was just thinking about I'm always speaking out loud. I want to I'm like mother I want to see heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to see what you called me for. What 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 is my spirit to make me? I just need to see. And so the next thing I know, I was up I was in heaven. I could see different portals. It was beautiful. You know, it was like a like this. And I just walked through and mother invited me to come sit next to her. And then she began to tell me who I am in the kingdom that I am. Oh, and um, she called me fire started. That's the one I believe. Yeah, she called me fire started. She said, you're my fire starter. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you are to start a fire. A lot of times as when we're growing up in, let's say I would say Christianity, they don't want you to rough no feathers. They don't want you to start no fire. You know what I mean? And so, but mother called me a fire starter. And I said, why you call me a fire starter? So she said, look at your hands. So do you know why your hands burn like that all the time? And so I said, no. She said, because I've placed my fire in your hands. And I experienced this a lot, especially, and I'm very careful as to who I I. I touch because you have to wait until Holy Spirit says this is the person that I want you to touch. So I've experienced things with, even before I knew 
that I'm a fire starter or actually being able to look at my hands and see crystals on my hands. You know, I see that a lot, especially when mother is speaking to me, go touch that person. So a lot of times it may be a healing of their heart, healing of grief, healing of sadness to bring back their joy, or it could be a healing in their physical body. So if I, I've experienced that tremendously of one of my coworkers um, had AIDS, has AIDS, and he was having a very difficult day that day. And we were on the elevator and I just turned around and I grabbed him and I held him. And he said his whole body felt like fire, electricity was going through it. He came, after lunch, he came back to me in my office and he said, I don't know what you did. You didn't say a word but I felt everything through your hands. And I am no longer feeling, Ill. he was feeling ill from the medications. So I've had those experiences that um, it's, it's, it's very like translate because you, it's not you and you know it's not you, you're just being obedient or sometimes like the craziest things. I remember standing on the, on a, the, the, the train platform and I could see the young lady, this young lady, she was hurting emotionally. She was just hurting. She was fighting back to tears. And mother says, go over there and, and just lay your shoulder next to hers and tell her it's okay. You can cry. So I did this to a total stranger. I was at first, I was like, do what now? <laughs> so I went over there and I just said, here, here's my shoulder. And this young lady just grabbed me and just bawled. And when I say bald, 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 that's all she needed. And she said, you know, I was thinking of jumping in front of this train. So I remember things like that and so many other things that has happened that I, I, I don't even try to, I try to explain it to that person that I'm touching that is not me. Because some people that have never had that experience tend to want to, you know, cling to the prophet, <laughs> you know, you know, and I'm like, no, this is not me. You know, this is what I heard Holy Spirit say for me to do. And you have to do it at that moment, you know, not when you feel like it. Yeah. So that's something that I believe is key. Um, and I would like for you to talk a bit more about that is. Uh, pretty much finding ways to be of use, finding uh, more so being a kingdom solution out in everyday locations where that person probably never would have walked into a church building. They were on the train. God knew a kingdom person was going to be there. Got you on the train with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually believe that that's more so the mode that God always wanted for the Ecclesia was to be pretty much first aid everywhere. I, you know, I agree too. And that happens a lot for me. My experiences have not been in church. It has never been in church. I have, you know, it's funny because while when I was attending the, the, the church, you know, or involved in, in religion, many people would, would call me on the DL because, oh, I know that you, I know that you are a prophet but I wasn't acknowledged or confirmed as far as they could, you know what I mean? Because I didn't look like, and I didn't sound like I wasn't a part of the clique. And so for me, it was calling me, you know, on the DL from a word from God. Or I remember once I was speaking to a young lady who happened had called me from this very church that we both were attending and she was going through some difficult times with her husband. And the Holy Spirit had showed me where he was going and what he was doing. And so I waited until she came to me, you know, and Holy Spirit, no, no, wait until she comes to you. And so she called me and I started, I told her. And then the next morning, now he actually said to her that he was, he, he confirmed what he was doing and he was going right back to what he was doing that night. So the next, the next day it was a Saturday. I'd never forget. I was in my house. I was, um, uh, mopping my floors and I had this, this, this open eye vision. 
And I saw her and her best friend having a conversation about me. Oh, you shouldn't listen to her. She's not ordained. She's da 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 da. So that day she called me and I said, first, let me say this to you. I saw you earlier today. She said, where? I said, I saw you in your house. That's another place, again, that, that being translated and, you know, some, you being able to see. Um, and things of that nature has happened to me a lot, especially on my workplace. I believe that I am my workplace well, even if if I'm just on the street or like, again, like when I was on the train station, God's calling us for the kingdom, for people that will never go into a church. And then, I, you know, I'm say this, and I'm, I'm, I'm so unapologetically about this when I say this, that during COVID, and even probably to, before that, but there was a lot of people that left the church or people that might have thought about going to church, but it felt like the, for them, the church hid. The church was hiding from the from from what they, you know, God has called them to to do, which is to reign, and which is to occupy, and to tear down and to build up. And I always say, and I know people laugh when I say this, that God has given us the keys to the kingdom. But the only key we ever used was to open up the church. Um, and that's the truth because we when it came, when it comes to education, when it comes to politics, when it comes to science, when it comes to governmental statutes, and the ecclesia is called for the government, Christianity shied away from all of that stuff, but yet we tend to talk about the music, talk about this, or talk about all these other stuff that we should have been a part of and you wonder why it is so perverted now because the ecclesia the governmental we should have been there so i usually usually it was given to the sons first and they rejected it and then they spend the next decade or so trying to play catch up Mm -hmm. hip-hop was originally given to believers believers didn't want it and now it's ran by the secular world. It's ran by uh, a demonic community. And now they're trying to now introduce gospel rap and things like that. Playing catch up when exactly. we actually had a head start. <laughs> I mean, that includes fashion. That includes yeah. the theater. I remember hearing, because I am a, a, a vocalist, you know, I, once upon a time, I was an R&B singer. I had a an entertainment attorney, I had the manager, the whole nine. And and I also, you know, I do gospel, I was doing gospel plays and and off Broadway. And I was told by Christian P- Christianity, oh, that's the devil workshop. You shouldn't want to be, you know, involved. Now for me, singing has always been my form of worship. You know, that's it, that that's been my baby. Um, I don't need a choir. I don't need the drums. I don't need the bass. I don't need all that. <laughs> you know, it's just me and the presence of getting in the presence of Holy Spirit. And I thank God that He brought me out of R and B. And only, and I can say this is because He needed my voice someplace else. Um, I know that when I sing, there's healing. I, I've seen it. I've heard it from other people. And most importantly, Holy Spirit has said, "Open your mouth." and just sing. And I think a lot of times, and I might be getting off the uh, the subject matter, but- Oh no, you're I, good. I think that sometimes, you know, that, that, that new saying that young people saying now, you're doing too much. <laughs> I think that if we take the time and listen to, to Holy Spirit speak to us, instead of trying to do you doing too much, it don't take all that. You know what I mean? Um, cause if we go back and we look at, like, if we think about church and we think about the, the different religions and the Pentecostals and the holiness and all of this dancing and, you know, and some of it's, you have to ask yourself, where is that coming from? You know, it's just you. I, and then I also believe that we've been trained as Christians to 
to have a relationship with with a book than with Holy Spirit ourselves. We haven't been trained to have an ear to hear. We haven't. We've had we've been training our ear to hear with the bishop saying, you know, the, the pastor is saying, but we're not training our ear, inclining our ear to hear what Holy Spirit, because he's, you know, I always say this before there was a written word, there was the voice of God. And the voice of God is still speaking. Or if we say that if if we say God is doing a new thing, why is it you don't accept that new thing because it's not in those books? It's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Going back just a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a fun question. Um, you mentioned how you were a part of the music industry and then God eventually called you to a different area of it. Um, who are some people, uh, whether they're alive or not, that are still in the music industry that you believe actually have a heavy calling on their life that they just haven't accepted yet? I'm going to say. This may sound strange. But I'm gonna say tank. tank. I will say tank. I will also say um, there's another one who 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 sings gospel. She does R and B, but she sings gospel. But she has a great calling on, and that would be um, what Fantasia. Fantasia. Some of the people that I've discerned it in is uh, Post Malone. Funny enough. <laughs> oh, okay. Because that's an example of somebody that don't look the part at all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wait, there's the, the there's one guy from the Maroons, the group called the Maroons. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't even think of his name. Actually, he went he he broke away from the Maroons and he's solo now. He's done a, a stint on um what's that America not America got talent, but the one where they turn turn the chairs around. The uh, I, what is that? Um the voice. The voice. Yeah. Um, definitely. And I mean, then another, I, yeah, like another big one that I know of is uh, Nicki Minaj, funny enough. She has a I major think, calling on her life. I think, and I, I think she see, knows it. I could see that in her. Most people, I could see that. I see what you're saying. I think she's wanted out for a long time, but hasn't felt safe enough to leave. It's it, it's it's hard to get it. it. Well, okay, for for women and 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 men is two different entry levels. For women, a lot it's paying your way on your back, um, unfortunately, and then it's it's you know, I. I one of the reasons why I came out of the music industry because I never felt that I needed to take my clothes off. And that was something, again, like I said, I thank God for my mother. Although, albeit I was raised in a very religious institution, Seventh-day Adventist, I didn't want to take my clothes off. Or there were certain songs that the the a &R would give me or the producers would give me and say, how do you think you can sing this? And it was songs that I could never relate my life to because I never lived that life, you know, dropping it like it's hot or, or, you know, very sexual. I, I that wasn't me or saying things that, because in order to convey something, you have, to me, you have to live through it. And if I were to sing those songs or to sing those, you know, those lyrics, I would definitely be lying. And I could, and actually, in order for me to convey, because you have to convey it as truth, that would have been a lie for me. And they would never would have come across as, like, if I can sing Jesus is real, you know, when they song Jesus is real, you feel that thing in your soul and your gut. So... I couldn't, and because I came from singing in the choir, you know, and, and knowing who God is, to sing those type of songs and the way they wanted me to dress, I, I just couldn't. So, you know, my actually my entertainment, my manager and my ent entertainment lawyer, even to this day, 
we're still good friends. And they say, when are you going to keep writing? Because I used to write music, as, write music as well. So I never regretted it because I believed that I had, I kept going and kept going. I would not be, I would not have the relationship that I have with Holy Spirit. So going back to some themes that you've mentioned before, just for explanation for the viewers, you mentioned mother a lot. Who is mother to you? And how did you uh, access the revelation of who mother really is? Mother is Holy Spirit. So for me, I remember it was doing all my prayer at church, came home and came home like six, seven o'clock in the morning. And I just, I, I was just, I was still seeking. Now I had been in all night prayer, but I was still seeking, still seeking, you know. And mother had put this question. And back then I was like just saying the Holy Spirit, which is such an insult for her. But um, the scripture that says, let us make man in our own image kept resonating, resonating, resonating over and over i mean i spent the whole entire day on the floor help me understand this grabbing all types of bibles that i had just to see if it's if it was written differently in 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 a different bible and then he was like how can then I'm, i mean i'm actually sitting up on the floor how can they make men in their own images if there's everything the male the, the tree art is all male God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. How is that possible when scripture says, as it is in heaven, let it be here on earth? It was not possible. It is not possible. So I went back to my bishop and I like, and I bought this, and I was like, this thing is really nagging me. And it nagged when, when when Holy Spirit really wanted to get your attention, that she will, they would nag and nag and nag, and you cannot let this thing go. And so eventually I started pulling away from Christianity because he couldn't answer that question. I said, it cannot be all male. There has to be a female. It has to be. And of course, I probably to them sounded like I was a heretic or whatever, but no one could actually explain that to me. So if I'm wrong, explain it to me. Yeah, because just going further on what you were saying, we see the creation of man. You say Adam, who was the man made in God's image. Mm -hmm. And then out of Adam came Eve. Oh, out of Adam, the male Adam, that whole Adam, they kind of got split into a male and a female Adam. They were both named Adam. Mm -hmm. um, the female Adam later was named Eve. But the only way to get a female out of that entity is if there was a female in the Godhead, because that was the blueprint. I, and, and, and this is what I was, I would be bringing forth. To, well, can you explain me this? Or, or when I would say... They both were named Adam. No, no one can explain that, couldn't explain except Holy Spirit. And then with regards to mother, that's where it all my, my, it started building for me. It's impossible. It is impossible. And so then I remember when I met, no, when I, I went to, sorry, my dog has a cold. <laughs> um, when I went, mother was pulling me out of church, pulling me out because every time I would go, I would smell things and I knew what that smell was. And I could see flies and I could see, and every time my stomach would hurt so badly. So when I would go to the elders, I'd say, oh, God would never tell you to leave and da 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 And so I remember one day I was walking my dog and I was talking to Holy Spirit and I said, when are you going to tell me where I'm supposed to go? You're telling me to leave, but when you, where are you told me to go? And, and I heard it just as I heard the voice, I heard her. She said, when I told Abraham to leave, he left. That was all she wrote for me. 
And so when I left, it was called, I I call it my wilderness experience because your wilderness experience is your, your wilderness experience is your training ground. And that is where most of the major prophets, Abraham, I, uh, uh, Elijah, where they really got to know um, and even um, David to know who God is. That alone time questioning, what is this? Where is this? What am I seeing? And I started developing that vocabulary. What is this? What am I seeing? You know, when scripture says, look, when the, they, they said, look, and he looked there and looked, and he saw this and he saw this and he like, saw the cold going as far. I'm past paraphrasing here. I started and asking those questions and asking about why do I dream so much in color? Why do I see things or why do I have, I'm privy to things that um, there's no way I could have known or, and I have, then I thank God I have this. I have people that I have spoken to about things that I saw and I said it to them just to have a witness you know, like I remember the Boston bomber. I didn't know what he looked like, um, but I saw him in a vision. I saw exactly where it was hiding. So I called an elder that I knew and told her everything. A couple of hours later, day later, he's found in the boat, like I said he was at. So when I was starting, this is when I say my training gown, when, when you start seeing these things and you're like, wait a minute, how come I'm seeing this? I remember seeing scientists I was hovering over scientists while they were inventing um, Ebola. And they knew my presence was there because they kept looking up. They couldn't see me, but they knew I was there. And so when, if I go back to mother, it's when it's that training ground in that wilderness, when I was being pulled out, every time that I would try to, to attempt to go to another church, Mother would be like, I didn't tell you to come here. Oh, I could see stuff. This is not where I told you to go. It wasn't until I met my tribe, so to speak. And I, I happened upon a, a, a Apostle Vincent Poole and, um, and um, an Apostle Lance Bellany and listening to a kingdom perspective. And I'm all about kingdom because this is what God has told me I'm called to the kingdom. Nobody's four walls. I got keys to every, every door, right? So, and I'm listening. And then I had happened but before I had, uh, listening to their program, their platform, I um, happened upon Pro Proverbs 8 and 9. When she began to say, I was there. I'm like, wait, what? You know? And I dwelled even deeper and deeper reading that and petitioning and going before, you know, mother and just having a conversation like I'm having with you. And that feminine voice, because whenever I would hear her, it would be a feminine voice. A feminine, and the only time I've actually heard a very loud voice's voice was when my experience, when, they, when I was told to get out of the bed. That's when it was very, it was a deep, you know, but every other experience I've had, I remember um, having my, you know, everyone, or, you know, they have their prayer room, a designated area where they go to pray. And I was on a Friday night, I was in my, in my room and I was laying there and I was just laying there talking. And then like a mother, I felt a blanket. She was hovering over me like a blanket and tucking herself in towards me. That's a mother. So that's why I refuse to say the Holy Spirit because mother is, is the mother. There's no way that the Godhead is all male. It's impossible. Then that would make God a liar. Because then yeah, that would And make, a hypocrite. Exactly. Then it would make homosexuality okay yeah because that mean they believe that the father up there raising his son with his partner exactly <laughs> there's no way possible and i i do not apologize for it i do not call him jesus because jesus is not his name you know um 
I, I often tell people, I said, why do you, you know, if, if his name is Jesus or whatever, then why do you call yourself a Christian? Because he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we're using the Greek language, he was a Christ, not a Christian. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Which and is I, what he told me. <laughs> but you see, these are the things that are that are in, I, that are in, and here's my point. We were, we are called to the kingdom and we're called to occupy, not occupy until we go in the ground. Right. We called to be game changers. We called to shake up the world. We're called to be fire starters. We're called to uproot. We called to stir up some stuff. Right. Um, we're not called just to go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday for prayer meeting. People are not being healed. People are not being delivered. They're not. Because if you have to go back to the same altar every Sunday, you're not being delivered because they've never had an experience with Holy Spirit. They've never experienced it. And I have. I rem I. I for myself, I can remember, again, it's about seeing the kingdom. And for me, it, it's actually about going through it myself. I had a lump in my breast. I was sitting and I could see feathers just falling on me. Went back for my examination. And the doctor says, I don't know what you did, but it's gone. And so I believe, I know for a fact, that Holy Spirit will allow you to experience some experience it for yourself. So you can have that Damascus road experience. So when you begin to speak, you're speaking from, from your heart. You're speaking from experience. It's just like I, you know, like the word Judah means praise and it means, you know, from the heart. And then Judas means it's another form of praise, but it means from learned behavior, learn, you know watching everybody else do, you know, learn how to do the holy dance and all this other stuff. That's learned stuff. So to see the kingdom is to have your a Damascus experience, to be able to see into the kingdom yourself. And then actually our job is to bring heaven here on earth and not yeah. be afraid to, we have access, access granted but we have been taught that we're only gonna go see heaven after we die and that's not true. Yeah, you know, since you've met me, I've been an advocate for that. I'm the first person to say, you wanna go? <laughs> exactly, and you can, you can, you do. It's just like, you have to have that childlike mentality. You know, do you wanna go, you know? And, but then here's the thing, Mother is, and Abba Father are, are such cool people that they're not going to frighten you. They're not, they ask you if you want to go. You have to have a made up mind because you're going to see some stuff that's going to blow your mind, you know, but he's not going to give, you know how the scripture was saying, God, I was not going to give it no, no more than what you can bear and all, the, all that. I feel the same way. He's not going to show you some stuff that's going to give you a heart attack. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're not mature enough to receive it. And the more you mature as a son of God, meaning male and female, because that's what we came, male and female, right? Um, he will reveal more to you and you'll be able to see more. So when people say, I want to see this and I want to see, th see that, you have to mature in your position and knowing who you are so you can go, but so you can't have, you know, still be on milk and afraid to go, you're not mature enough and you don't know your identity. Your identity is not with a church, nor with a religion, your identity and your sonship as an heir or being able to able to say, Yeshua is my brother. <laughs> Cause he is. Yeah. That's my brother. If he's the first of many sons and we're sons, that's not our dad. That's our older brother. That's our older brother. <laughs> and we were not called to worship him. Even he'll tell you that if you let him. 
He actually, uh, I forget who it was. I think it was Kevin Zadai. Somebody was uh, showing me something that he recently said where he said that uh, Yeshua turned to him and said, why do you keep asking me? Go talk to our parents. <laughs> exactly. But we're taught. And then, and then we could go on and on because there's so much and it's a short span of time. But Christianity keeps you in bondage. It keeps you in servitude. It makes you, 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 you cannot be the commander. You cannot reign. You cannot occupy if you have a servant, servanthood mind, mindset, you know, just to be a servant. We're called to be heirs. We're called to be the governing uh, ecclesia and to shake things up. So right now, we're in the Hebrew month Adar, which is all about the feminine voice, uh, feminine authority, the divine feminine, things of that nature. Um, what are some things that you can say on that topic, really just about the suppression of it and the reawakening of that attribute in the body and really throughout creation? Because uh, from what I'm seeing, the divine feminine is finding its way into every area of media like if you look at all the movies all you keep seeing is women and uh, women in water all over over and over and over again <laughs> exactly and I, I agree and even even in um the activist roles i remember a couple of years ago um when the me too movement came out and i said to one a very close dear friend of mine um and i said to her that God had revealed to me that the Me Too moment was just, I can't think of the proper word to say, just a, 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 what is it? Like a scale for what's really about to come forth for women. That's nothing of the, and, and that, that, that word that you said, catch, you know, we're just catching up. Cause the Me Too movement was out there. It wasn't about any religion. It wasn't about the God, it, you know, but God had revealed that to me. And I said, women are, are going to start coming forth and in, within the church. And now we are, and we're now, um, I think we have to pull away from, people will assume that we're thing we're trying to, uh, I cannot say this, trying to take over the, uh, the, the church or, or whatever, whatever. But the thing of it is that God did not call me to be this little docile, minuscule person. He called me. I have a voice, a very strong, and every voice, and everywhere within Scripture, we want to use the book and Scripture. There's always been a woman that saved the day. You know, here she comes to save the day, and so the feminine, the woman, is the is the bertha of things to come. We birth things in the natural as well as in the spiritual realm. And so I say to women, get your voice. Strength, the Adar means to be strengthened. This is a, you know, uh, through praise, Judah, you know, through praise, through, um, and, and get your strength and, and put your crown back on, you know, and walk in that with confidence, not in anything that you can do, but, and what he's doing within you. And I know that because I feel that, I feel that every day I'm more so when you go, you, I woke up this morning with just smiling around 3.30 this morning, just smiling to myself. And I hadn't really smiled like this the whole month of February. I was going through some, you know, as a woman, as a single woman, I was going through some little heartbreak. And so I asked mother, and for Abba Father to heal my heart. And then I, um, the, the beauty of having a conversation, not a monologue, but a dialogue, is I said, Mother, why am I being treated this way? Or why I said, you know, what am I not doing? Why do I, you know? And then she said, and I said, I'm being taught to be vulnerable. I should be vulnerable. 
you know, um, and because you said to me, be vulnerable, trust that with me. And so clear, clear as day. She said, don't I remember, don't you remember when I told you why I gave you two hearts? Because your heart is being strengthened and built to forgive others when they didn't love you. So then I asked Abba, Abba, I said, can you please? And I asked Holy Spirit to forgive him. So this morning, I woke up smiling, just literally smiling and feeling love all over me. I hadn't smiled in like a month because the back and forth, and I'm being honest, I'm being being, being very transparent for single women out there, you know, and, but here's the thing. I have an assignment and they will, mother and father will, will remove anybody that's standing in the way. And I knew there were some flags there. And I kept saying, mother, this is you, father, you know, you show me what to do. And sometimes they will do exact, they know they will do exactly that's getting in their way. Cause I'm a treasure. And it was like, you're not gonna mess with my daughter, you know? And so I actually woke up this morning when I tell you it felt like logs have been lifted from my back and my heart. I'm not angry anymore. Just smiling all day because he's given me the strength, Adar, to do what I had to do by ending the relationship. And then he's giving me my praise and say, Lord, I thank you. I just thank you for what, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for giving me a forgiving heart. I thank you for giving me my heart that's such so big. You know, at the, sometimes the things that I've seen or the things that I've gone through, I've often wondered why I'm, I still love that person. I still but I'm reminded I've given you a double heart for what you will you have for my people. That's awesome. I feel like that'll help a lot of people when this uh, recording come out. <laughs> for a lot, yeah, well, especially a lot of women to have, you know, especially this month, it's about strengthening. It's about knowing your voice. It's about speaking. It's about praising your way, even through heartbreak or grief or anything and not let grief or, or heartbreak or job loss or whatever get in your way, just address your crown, you know what I mean? And I woke up three o'clock this morning, just smiling to myself, you know? And I'm asking myself, what are you laying up here smiling about? <laughs> but I could feel the release. I could feel the release um, because that was a, that was a weapon that was targeted at me to take me back to a place, take me back to the cave. And what I mean by that is I was a woman who had gone through molestation as a child. I was a woman who got married briefly and within a month or so, two months, he's going to wanted to use me as a punching bag. So here I am, I have hidden myself in a cave. I have not dated. I have not done anything. You know what I mean? go to work, take care of my nieces, whatever. And I just thought it recently, you know, when, it, when, Abba, when I was asking about a husband, it was like, well, you need to start showing yourself vulnerable. And I'm like, do what? Um, well, you can trust me with your vulnerability and you can trust me. So again, that, that, that um, being in the wilderness, that wilderness training was where I was able to just God was able to circumcise my heart because I was giving him everything that was there. Or sometimes you don't even know what's there. That's going to be a stumbling block for you to go to the next level from glory to glory to glory. And for me, that was one. And so here I am finally trusting someone. Finally, after all of that, um, then this happens. And I, you know, I'm like, and I felt the target. I felt it was hovering. Oh, I could feel it. 
trying to pull me back. And I'm saying I was so stupid to trust anybody. Da 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 da. I'm never doing that again. I'm not da da da. And that's not what God called for me. And I know that. And I know it was an intentional arrow to pierce me deeply and to stop me from, from adjusting my crown and reigning and occupying. And when I tell you, it's, it, I can only explain it. Like I, I said to my mother this morning, I said, it was, just, it feels like I had heart surgery because the pain is not there anymore. So uh, diving into the prophetic just a little bit more, what are some things that you've seen, heard, or discerned about what's uh, coming up? What are some things that you know that uh, are like mandated by the kingdom that God's doing or getting ready to do? What are some things that may ha be uh, occurring in the natural world that uh, you can give some insight on? I would definitely point to, and I know we mentioned, you know, the prophetic voice of the woman. Um, I March first, when March first, I woke up that morning early. I'm a, I'm a three o'clock person, four o'clock waking up, basically every day. Um, and that particular morning, March fourth, March first, in my bedroom. I could see, I wasn't looking out the window. I was looking dead to the, to the ceiling or right next to me. And I could see the clouds turning. Everything was turning. And I was like, this is a shift. A shift is coming. And then I fell back asleep. And there were women that were messing with my locks. And they were putting them on top of my head like this. And they were sticking, they was like, no, it has to be on top. And they were adjusting my crown. So I, I thoroughly believe without question that women for this month, doors that you never thought would, would open for you. I'm talking about from the person that's cleaning the church you know, and people never knowing it. You know, it's funny how people, and I'm going on all subject here, how people go to the altar, but they only want to go to, to the person who they think they got the anointing, you know what I mean? And the person that's mopping the floor may be filled and you're missing it, you know? So anyway, women that, um, that have felt behind the scenes, Women, and I also, if there's another thing that resonates within my, you know, wisdom beyond a book, knowledge beyond a book, that you, you'll wake up knowing, being able to how to, to read another language or speak another language. I believe these things are coming forth, things that you never went to school for, things that that was never taught to you, that you never got out of scripture. You know, a shift is changing. And if you wanna keep up with that shift, you gotta get on board. You can't keep saying, oh, it's not in the Bible. I'm not going for it. And that's what I see. I see a total shift because I could, I could see the skies and they were just twirling and twirling and twirling. And I just woke up and I'm like, wow, there's a shift coming. And I'm like, okay, what's the shift? What's the shift? You know. Yeah. And I just want to add something just about like moving where God's moving. Because some people still find that uh, hard to really take in. And it really just a change of perspective. Let's just say, just to be nice, that every word in the Bible is 100 percent. And God said all of it. Let's let's just be nice. Okay. I know he didn't, but let's just say <laughs> that everything in the Bible God said and meant it was still given to the time period it was written to and addressed to the people it was addressed to. If I'm going someplace I've never been before and I don't know where I'm going and I'm following GPS and GPS says, get on the freeway. If I cut off GPS, I'll never get where I'm supposed to be going because I've settled for what it said, not for what it may say, not for mm -hmm. what it's still saying. Um, 
And that's kind of the way that people treat God and that God will is always speaking, yet they'll cling to what God has said versus what God is saying right now. Just because one instruction was given doesn't mean another one can't come up, especially if you've ever driven through Houston. <laughs> them or lefts and rights come quick. Or New York. <laughs> yeah, them lefts and right come quick. It's exactly. like, all right, turn left. All right, turn right. All right, turn left again. All right, make a U-turn. And if exactly. you still stuck on the left saying, nope, I heard it say turn left and I'm going to stay right exactly. there. <laughs> exactly. Or even imagine a map from 14 years ago. Maybe it was accurate for the time period it was written in, but ain't no even McDonald's on that corner no more. Right. But even with our modern day GPS, certain cities and certain streets go away and GPS may be recognizing the old name of the street. You know what I mean? We have to look. This is what I mean by changing of the guard, a changing of the times. And we have to be able to hear the voice of God and not just stick to that book because what was written not to say what because you know we can go back and forth about that book you know <laughs> uh, when, um what was written then or and here's another example of that how people can take a piece of a scripture and not and 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 and, and give it as a totality for everything but they never read the full content of that scripture Especially about the one about women should be silent. Yeah. Which but was all read, about people so, talking over him while he was teaching. <laughs> exactly. And they took that to mean women should be silent forever. We shouldn't teach. Yet they, yet they let him sing. They got to be silent, but they can sing. Exactly. They got to be silent, but they can teach Sunday school. You know, exactly. weird stuff like that. Weird stuff. <laughs> so and I'm like, make it make sense to me. You know, make it make sense. <laughs> um, just before we uh wrap this up, do you have anything more that you would like to share? Um, any more insight that you may have? I would say this. I always tell people because I, I attribute this to myself. In order to 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 heal, you have to feel. And so many of us, whether we're still in church, we're still whatever, the very thing that God is calling you to, you have to heal in that area so you can move in that area. And you have to study every aspect of that area beyond the Bible. There are resources out there. For me, every book that I have ever bought was because I had a conversation with mother. And then while I'm sleeping, I get this title, you know, downloaded into my, you know, and then I order it and I'm like, this is exactly what's in my sphere, what's in my gut that I'm drawn to. You know, so I would say the areas in your life, again, what God is calling you to, is right in front of you. It's areas that that you possibly need to be healed in to be to be able to move in that direction, to be a living epistle, living testimony. Because by word of testimony, they were healed before Yeshua did any uh, uh, teaching of any sort. He healed and drew them in. And that's what drew them in. So I I know my spirit is to heal. I know he wants it. for anyone, it, they have to be healed. And, you know, they have to feel in order to heal. Allow yourself to feel everything, even if it hurts you to your core, but bring it to mother. I can say this without, with, with every fiber in my being, that the areas in my life that needed he that, um, healing, God is using those very weak, those very sensitive, you know, heart-wrenching things that have happened in my life for men, for women in those areas. Because I walked in their shoes, I can identify 
with them. I can identify, you know, I remember when I was a singles ministry leader at one point, and I always advocated for the married, the, the singles speaking to the married couples, and they, they would never want to do that. And I said, well, how would you want to, why would you want to come speak to the singles if you can't identify with where they are? We need to be transparent and telling us to just keep our legs closed and wait is not going to do it. And so heal, feel everything that are, that's around you and yeah. bring it and let the healer heal honesty yeah. and transparency. That's heavy. <laughs> Just emphasizing again the healing thing and what you were saying earlier about people using scripture in various ways like I was talking to somebody about um, healing. Somebody messaged me about uh, healing in their body. And they were like, well, could it be kind of like the thorn in Paul's flesh? And I was like, the thorn in Paul's flesh wasn't an infirmity. <laughs> That's something that he was annoyed with. And, and it even tells you what it was, messenger of Satan. The thorn in Paul's side was pretty much just Paul's way of saying, I'm annoyed with my calling and I want out. <laughs> and God kept telling them, nope, this yours. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but we have people using that as a reason to deny people their healing. <laughs> if it's wrong, just be wrong. But then they're using it to keep people in bondage, keep people hurt, keep people in sorrow. Um, or, you know, like, that's God, by saying, oh, that's God's will. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe it is just something God wants you to go. Like, no, sometimes, but no, just because you go through it don't mean God puts you in that. Sometimes we, exactly. sometimes we get ourselves in our own trouble. We don't need help. <laughs> exactly. And, and like there, there again lies in the my when I said that we need to study as much as we can um, with with resources outside of the Bible, because there are portals that we open up to invite said things into our lives and to our bodies and things of that nature. And Christianity doesn't teach you those things. Yeah. And one thing I'll add about marriage, cause you know, I'm married now. So according to religious people, I'm qualified. So okay. um, a lot of people believe that uh, marriage gets rid of dysfunction. It doesn't. <laughs> And I'm not talking about my marriage. Me and my wife, we like each other. We uh we were best friends before we got married. So I know that. Not not in our situation, but in a lot of times I've heard it before when I was in church that the solution to single people issues was just to get married. All that does is put the issues in covenant. Now you each can suffer with what uh, what the other person was suffering with. Exactly. That's what I <laughs> by I was a big advocate for the singles because because Singles could greatly minister to married couples. Yeah. But it's never done that way. It's always done the opposite way. You know, the, I could go into a whole lot of stories about that, but I won't. I digress. But we could, singles could be, could you, if you look at it like this, if, if all the single people left the church, there won't be no members, that many members. Like my generation, and it's one of those chain of effect, domino effect things where there was so much relational dysfunction in, let's just say, the uh, greatest generation, you know, before the baby boomers parents, where they were beating their wives, but they were bringing home money. So they kids, the baby boomers watched that and thought that's how life was supposed to go. And then their kids, your group and around my mom's age. Uh, they was like, yeah, we're not marrying that, but they dated it. <laughs> and then my group, you know, y'all kids was like, uh, now we get to the point where my group don't even want to date no more. <laughs> You're like, yeah, like what's with that? There is no courting. It's just a domino effect of dysfunction. It went from exactly. marriage to dating to now we just friend, like now we don't. 
what we we made up new terms situationship whatever that is exactly (laughs) i'm like it's a chain effect when i came back into this dating thing i was like oh man this is a swamp out here Like one of my favorite John Wesley quotes where he says, uh, what one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. Mm -hmm. Very true. Pretty much the current is always the harvest of the last. Mm -hmm. Like, why is why does it seem to be like even with the LGBT community? Why does it seem like there's so much of a force behind that community? Because it's a reaction to how much hell and torment. Christians specifically put them through in the last few decades mm-hmm. where they was beating them and abusing people just because they were wrong. They had issues in a different area. Exactly. <laughs> so then we have this one group that come up and say, we ain't getting bullied no more. <laughs> exactly. One thousand. <laughs> it's just like, where, new, like with the new agers. Yeah. There's a lot of truth. And a lot of these new agers. Christianity yeah. doesn't embrace it. But there's yeah. a lot of truth, you know, in what they're speaking. Yeah. And a lot of them are really just believers who were encountering the real God and got ran out of church exactly. because their experiences were foreign. Exactly. So I guess they probably, some people may call me a new ager. Okay. But I'm a follower of the way of the kingdom. I don't embrace Christianity. I'm not a Christian. I'm a follower of the way of Yeshua, of the kingdom. Yeah. (laughs) I left Christianity a few years ago. That's a topic in itself. I might do a video on that. (laughs) Yeah, we should have a panel because I think we know a bunch of folks that have left Christianity. I know too many. (laughs) That's what the inner for. You know, I get to invite all that left Christianity to tell they surviving story, like, you know, surviving R. Kelly is surviving exactly. Christianity. Exactly. It seemed like the Baptist church got a lot of it. Surviving Christianity. <laughs> and unfortunately, so many people have walked away so offended by Christianity and totally walked away from God. Never yeah. having a, a relationship or never once developing a relationship with God because they, you know, Christianity introduced you at the altar to say this Lord's Prayer, which is not even in the Bible, to say this, 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 this sentence prayer. And then yeah. a couple of weeks of, 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 of Bible study and you're left on your own. Never yeah. to embrace or never understand who Holy Spirit is, you know. And then you get the church hurt and then you leave and you think that's God. And that's not because that's not who he is. And that is not kingdom. So you walk around for years bruised and hurt, you know, um, and every aspect of, of, of Holy Spirit knocking on that door, you won't embrace it, you know, until I guess going to really knock you down on your feet, you know, how they arrest and develop you so to speak. Yeah, because even just to say it this way, the issue isn't necessarily that certain things exist. It's the level of importance they've been uh, ingrained in the people's psyche where uh, the religion, Christianity, is more important than God is. (laughs) Where the Bible is more important than the voice of God. Exactly. Exactly. It's gone beyond just studying. I, I read everything. If y'all can see my library, I took a picture of it and posted it on the I Facebook that, group. When I saw that, I was <laughs> like, oh, my God, I need to show him mine. You know, <laughs> well, um, that's just the physical library. My digital library just as big. Yeah, it's, but that's the thing. And then also, you, uh, I would say, you know, people nowadays, they don't want to read. They want somebody else to spoon feed it to them. You know, um, but then they're only giving you their interpretation. Yeah. And Disguised so, as God is the scary part sometimes. And, and and well, I would even add this because, you know, Holy Spirit has said to me that, you know, if I actually showed myself, they would run and say, oh, this is demonic because they've never experienced anything other than dancing and hooping and hollering. That's all that, you know, because yeah. I make a joke, joke out of it. I've said it before when 
you know, when all of the, when you fall out in the spirit, you should be getting up with the word, not just tissue and snot. Yes. You should it should be a lot more than a loss of gravity. Exactly. And there I should always it. be some type of transformation. Exactly. Because when all of them, I was taken in the spirit, I was taken here and I saw and I looked and man of God, what do you see? Can you breathe air, life into these bones? You know, what? What was said? What did you experience? I'm gonna leave that there. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they go Cause we could, my juggling with that one. Yeah, because we could pick for for hours. Like, cause once you've gotten out of it, it's easier to see it. <laughs> yeah. And it's harder to see it when you're defending it. And yes. God's and and you can still feel God pulling you away from it. And mm -hmm. it's a sad state I've seen a lot of people in where they are clinging to a system that they've heard God say leave due to loyalty. They don't, it's really a different types of fear. And I was talking to Andre Pfizer about this earlier. It's different types of fear. There's the fear of the unknown. There's the fear of uncharted territory. There's the fear of witchcraft. There's the fear of going too far, uh, which obviously can't be scare, scarier. It, it I guess it has to be scarier than simply just never getting to actually know God. Otherwise they accept just knowing God and say, at least I got that. <laughs> but see, I've, you know, for me, I remember when, when, when I said to you that, that Holy Spirit would always, whatever I needed, you know, I might not have, no, whatever I needed, I voiced it. And I used to always say, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. And you have to have that yearning for that more. To yeah. go into those uncharted territories that they said, oh, don't go in. Don't read Enoch. Don't read the, 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 the Apocrypha books. Don't do that. You know, don't, you know, you know, there's so many things that we were told not to dwell into. Don't study that. To say what I said on the meeting last night, if God has used the Bible as jacked up and corrupted and all the other stuff that it is, and God's able to teach us through that, everything else is safe. You can't That's find right. anything more tampered with I said I was going to be nice, but <laughs> if God can use the Bible, he can use other texts and other resources also. I won't, exactly. I won't pick too much. And that's what <laughs> I meant by the new ages. Yeah. They have tapped into areas that religion or Christianity calls it heresy because they've never experienced this before themselves. They've never yeah. had that Damascus road only secondhand yeah. knowledge that was given to them preached at them instead of having that that experience of themselves when i can say i saw the king yeah. you know that is things like when 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 paul was he saw that he knew and when you have that i know that i know i know mm, i could go on with that but that i know i know i know it's powerful because that that's confidence because you know. Yeah. It, it to the people listening, I usually don't talk much on these, but you have to your hunger for God has to outgrow your desire to be accepted by Christians or whatever religion you may be close to. Mm -hmm. Say it. Say your it. hunger for God has to outgrow that. Once you lose the fear of other people because it's easy to lose it in other areas people will lose the fear of what other people think about them until it comes to religion mm -hmm. lose their fear too <laughs> exactly so <laughs> let's see 
we actually got to close soon, you know, because okay. we, we could go on for hours. Know, I'm not trying, you know, you know, Wallace got three hours out of me. I don't want to do that no more. <laughs> well, Del, I, um, I thank you for inviting me. I thank you. Um, it's been wonderful. I I can't even express. It's, it's an honor to just even um, speak. So in a way, so like um, that old song says, let my people go. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's what God is saying. Let my people go so they can worship me. That's the cry of God right now. Christianity, mm -hmm. let his people go. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so I'm honored to be here and I'm honored to shout that. And I'm going to continual, continually shout that. If you could, before we end this uh, completely, um, could you pray for the viewers? Father Abba, incline your ear, Father. I thank you for the, the ability to stand in your stead and, Father, to hear your heart for your people. I ask and I command that their ears be opened and inclined to hear from you and Mother, that they will experience a have a Damascus Road experience to know you personally, to see the kingdom, to hear your voice, that they have that experience. I know, you know, to know, I know, I know, I know. To hear you call their name, for you to change their name, change your name that comes out of your mouth, their mouth to identify. So that they would know that their kingship and their sonship, to know that they are partners, to know that we are to occupy, to tear down, to uproot, and to set things in order for you to come, because you're not going to come until we set things in order. We take back everything. So, Father, I ask you and I command ministering angels to, to go to the ears that are listening, to open our ears, pop. If your ears should pop tonight, just I hear popping, I hear popping. Your ears to pop and you will hear and see the veils will be removed. And I ask for maturity levels to go up, to receive and not be afraid, but to embrace, embrace the new thing that he's doing in you. Embrace the things, the fire that has been within you that no one has given you any water to put out because the fire is there on purpose. He wants you to come up, come up to Jacob's ladder, come up to heaven, come up to see what he has for you. This is my prayer, Father, for your people that you have given me a heart for. In the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Awesome. So for the people that may want to connect with you, where can they connect with you? Facebook. Facebook, uh, Sean Stanley. Yep, Sean Stanley. <laughs> I actually don't put Prophet Sean Stanley up there because I want people to speak to me uh, like everyday Sean and let my let my life, let the words that come up, my, my, my character, my integrity come forth. And then they'll ask me, there's something about you. That's respectable. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was great. Thank you for joining me here. Um, I haven't done this before, but um, for more information some on some of the topics we talked about, um, my wife has been doing a series on her YouTube channel uh, called Debunking Pentecostalism, where she started to tear down from the relationship that she has and from her understanding um, and the revelation she's gathered, uh, many of the different constructs that have kept people bond in bondage and the form of Pentecostalism that she came out of. Mm -hmm. um, just going into a little bit of what you were saying is that oftentimes you have to feel to heal oftentimes you're called to go back and get rid of what once bound you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I'm plugging it. Match them out of the fire. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm plugging that just because it goes in with um, the topics, some of the things we talked about. Um, Rachel, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, y'all, uh, again, Sean, thank you for joining me. Um, all right, y'all, that'll be it for this episode of The Inner. Y'all be blessed. Me. Have a great night. <laughs> Later.